Okay, now you pronounced your name Michael just now, but your name is Michael. Michael. And, and spell that for us. M I C H E L E. Michael. Mrs. Ayanelli, would you give us your full name at birth? Elvira D'Ambrosio. And would you spell your last name? D A M D M D R the R O S I O. Okay. When were you born and where? 1934, uh, May 31st. In Padula, Provincia di Spagna. 34, May 1934. Who were your parents? and about what ages were they, more or less when were they born, and also wh where were they from? My uh, mother and father was uh, from the same place, Padula, and uh, uh, my father was born in 1895, and my mother in uh, 1894. Uh, my mother's name was uh, Maria San Siviero. San Siviero. Uh, San Siviero. And your father's name? Giovanni D'Ambrosio. What did they do for, for their livelihood? Were they agriculturalists or what? Uh, my father, uh, father uh, used to have a lot of land. And they have a people work for them. And they have a house and they have a lot of... Lot of they used to... Um, Plant, uh, no. They used to have a lot of fruit, apple, cherry, figs, and, uh, and people, they, they have a full family, eight children, they work for us. And my father go and uh, see like if it. everything was okay. Yeah. But then my father immigrated to New York. To America. To America when he was uh, like 16. Yeah. Did, did he come to America to stay? To, to stay, uh, they already no. have a cousin in America. And he stayed with, uh, with, them. with, the, with the cousins. And he used to work in, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Every two or three years he used to go back, leave a child, they go back again <laughs> to America. Again, <laughs> after two or three years, another child, they go back to America. Two years over here, one year yeah, over he, he did the uh, eighth voyage, like, to, to the, this year. Eighth voyage, yeah. back and forth? Back and forth, back and forth. Now, he did the voyages between, more or less, what year and what year? Well, he was uh, born, what I said, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, and then it was 16. Mm -hmm. The 16 yeah. the first time? Yeah, it was 16. So roughly from about 1910, yeah. 1911, yeah. up until when? Uh, I was uh, 1936. Yeah. 36, no. He even went back. It to, went, uh, the last time he came last, back. Yeah, the last time he was back in Padua. No. From New York to Padua. How many, how many siblings do you have, brothers and sisters? Well, I have uh, six. three more sisters and two brothers. We are all, all together six. And where are you in that line? I'm at the, the fourth the, one. The fourth one. So when you were raised, you were raised with two fa two two parents. Yes. They were always around. Yes. Well, all around. Well, well, the father used to come back, back to America for two years, one year, so yeah, well, to when make I, another one. When I was two year two years old, yeah. my father then was living every time there. Uh, up to yeah. 1936. 1936. Uh, that uh, period from 19. 36. Um, and he never went uh, back. Uh, uh, and uh, also he was, he was here, he went to Padula to go in the army in the First World War. The father. Yeah, okay, now tell us that story. Your father was in America when the First World War began. Yes, and then uh, he went to, uh, to Padula. went to Padula and uh, he, become, uh, he went to the First World War. In Italy, yeah. But that was okay because he was not a U.S. citizen, was he? No, no, no. no. Yeah, the the, 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 the Italian government was making propaganda 
that uh, if they won't join the army in Italy, they, w they couldn't go back anymore. Well, that's, that's what the fantasy of that time. He chose Italy because of the family was there, <laughs> you know, at the, to stay close to the family, I guess. Did your father tell stories about being in the war? Well, a lot of stories. Once he said uh, he wanted to go back uh, so bad home, uh, he put a he chew tobacco he and he uh, had a high fever. Like that, they could bring <laughs> to home, you know. Hmm. Yeah. But he, he was, um, he had some uh, kind of injury on the knee. The, did you see that picture? And, uh, he has a brace over here? Yes. Because of the injury. I didn't see the war. Yeah. Now tell us about your family, your parents. Who were they? What were their names? Where did they come from? What ages were they? My father and my mother were all from Padua, born in Padua. So my father was born in 1897. 1897. And your mother? I was born in Padula, 1901. And their names? Uh, my, my father was Antonio Iannelli, Iannelli. And my mother's name, my maiden name was uh, Petronilla Merito. Spell that. Petronilla? Me, the last name. Merito, M-E-L-I-T-O. Now, how was Iannelli spelled in the old country. In the, the, in the, the, the Italian way, E A N N A L L E. The way you spell it here. That's it. No, over you can spell I A N N E L L I. There's an E. E at the at front and back. See, I is E over there. Hmm. Now, what was your father's name? Antonio, you say? Antonio. And was it pronounced Antonio in Antonio, Italy? Antonio, yeah. Where did they come from? They, you say they were born in, in Padula, Padula, but yeah. what about your ancestors? Were they also from Padula, that part? Padula, yeah, I guess from way, way back. Because uh, it, we live on top uh, of the town. At the, uh, the beginning, when they started to build that town, they were always the on top at the end. Uh, and uh, I figure that they were one of the, the oldest people in Badu, the family, no? Tell us about when you were very, very young, your first memories, three, four years old, both of you. My memory? Your first memories when you... Well, uh, let me say about five, six, by the I remember. Uh, I used to go to school close by, went to school close by to the house. And uh, I used to go there for three or four hours, playing a little bit, and then returning home. And then my mother used to send me to my uncle's barbershop in, in a, an account of not to go around and play. She said, you go to the, your uncle's barbershop, this way you learn how to also the trade. <laughs> The barber trade, and like this, this type of life I used up to 12 years was always to in between men's and everything, listen to every, everything and so, make my living. Now, were you only going to the barber shop and being there, or was it also an apprenticeship? Well, sort like of? A, apprenticeship, but not a, because five or six year old. But to let me there to stay under my 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 uncle's eyes. <laughs> what was your uncle's name? Carmelo. 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 Yeah, uh, Camay, no? Carmelino. Did he ever come to America? Uh, not to. He, he came to America, but to uh, Venezuela, the South America, in the city of Caracas. So this is when you learned your trade. Yeah, it's slowly, slowly up to 15 years old. Mm -hmm. How long did you go to school? How many years? Five years. Up there at that time, but it was just at the elementary. Elementary, so one to five. And if you wanted to go to sixth grade, where would you I go? Had to go to another town. To Salerno. No, Salerno. Salerno. 
about uh, ten, 10 miles from Padua. Did many children go to that other town? Few, few people, few, because you had to, people that they had the money, they had to send their sons by uh, the bus, autobus, and they had to pay so much, you know, each month, but I, I couldn't go. You couldn't go because you could not afford it? At that, that time, yes. What, what kind of profession did your father... Uh, it was an, an uh, agricultural... This was also during the Depression. Uh, uh, especially that time was the Depression. I became uh, the head of the family when I was 11 years old. Why? Because my father was uh, over in New York. Money didn't come from America because it, they, they couldn't work. So I tried to, to work in the barber shop slowly, bringing me. And I remember the first 20 lead I had, I brought to my mother, Ma, hey, here's 20 lead. That's uh, because I knew the need in the family. Can you explain what your father, father's experiences coming to New York or to America were like? When did he start and up until when did he oh, keep I coming? Guess, I guess uh, my father came to America around the 1923, around the time I was born. And uh, it used to be, he used to say, three years and then come back, they stay one year, make an, another song, and then go back again. <laughs> and then the same for about up to 1932. 1932, he left for America, and now, uh, that's the first time I went to Naples. I, was, I went with him to Naples the first time. And then, on account of the depression, on account of the war, I we didn't see him until 1947, 15, 16 years later. Was your, your father was not the first one in the family to, who, to come to America? No, he was the last one. A four a three more brother went before him. What about your grandfather? Did he ever come to America? <laughs> My grandfather came to America when the Brooklyn Bridge was open. He was, the, he was uh, in Brooklyn the day the Brooklyn Bridge was open. I used to walk the bridge, according to him. I, he was walking the bridge uh, to pay uh, one penny or five cents, I don't remember, to reach man, the lower Manhattan. That was when? 1870 uh, something? Something. So now it's about 110 years. Was your grandfather the first one of the INLs to, to come to America? Yeah, but then it did stay about two or three years and came back. It didn't go anymore. What was his name? Miguel. Miguel Ayanel, the same. Huh? That's a tradition. The name is not from father and son. That's the tradition of town. Now, when the men came to America, the women were having to raise the children right. by themselves yes. or, or with well, explain no, that most well my mother uh, with the help of a, you know a, a, a mother and a sister you know uh, so yes, it was yes, a family affair it was family yeah, you close, know, close they family, take care you know, of yeah, yes. very close family and if you need help you know they so yes, that did family. But yeah. the, the mother was the one who did that. But My mother was very, very lively, very, very nice lady. When did your mother pass away? 1983. And your father? 1970. How about your parents? My mother is about 72. Years ago. No, I'm 72 now. And did they live in, in Padula uh, when... Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, I was with my mother, mother, always with my mother. mother. And we used to have my grandfather with us. And we used to give a yeah. normal life. Both your mother died in uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, they were, they, we were living with everybody here. Now, what was Padula like? How big was it? What was the daily... 
ambience like well it's a daily routine like a tower a small tower you go to work 12 o'clock you go eat uh, your lunch and then return to work and they, they uh, had like a siesta <laughs> I used uh, special, especially for me. I did, in the account I was a barber, I used to stay up late, maybe nine, ten o'clock sometime. And my mother used to leave me two eggs, two, three pieces of bacon, and what do you call it? Over to it. In the, no, no, no. the and, uh, I, I used to, to, to do my, my eggs and, cook. and bacon cook. <laughs> One time, we didn't have no more bacon. She left me uh, oil there. So I put the, I put the eggs, I put it, and then I put, the, I put the oil together. And I was watching. And when those eggs start to do, <laughs> because there was everything cold, then I realized <laughs> that it's supposed to be warm up the oil <laughs> and then the, the, the eggs. For the MC. And that's what's my most experience. <laughs> that's why I, I learned how to cook my eggs. <laughs> Mrs. Zainelli, when, uh, when did you first see him? Well, <laughs> when did you meet him? I met him uh, in 1955, uh, uh, right? 54. Uh, 55. Yeah. So he used to have a little store. And uh, still uh, everything like uh, stamps, uh, books, uh, uh, perfume, uh, yeah, exactly see, yeah. all those things. In, in his barber shop? No, no, after, no the barber. after the barber shop. That, that store, I found that store. I, then I left to my cousin when I came to America. Okay. Then I, they stayed five years and they, I went to my town again to meet my, my, uh, my wife. Uh, but okay, you. Um... I met. I went to the store. In the store, he was there, and I went to buy some uh, stamps and uh, postcards. And then I told her, "Do you want to marry me?" <laughs> you told her that then. <laughs> but I, said, I didn't know him. Anyway. You didn't know. <laughs> you were about nineteen. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, "Shin the bus." <laughs> what does that mean? mean Come down to come, my house. Come and talk with my father, <laughs> with daddy. You told him that. <laughs> I said, okay, I, I, come, don't, I don't know you. <laughs> I, I, I come on Sunday, the three or four day after. And that's why. Did you go? <laughs> oh, yeah. But you didn't know her. I knew her. How many saw me before? In the I saw office. her. Uh, she was a beautiful girl at that time. Is that the reason? Yeah, is yeah. that the reason you said, "Would you marry me?" Because she was a beautiful girl. Yeah, they, they, uh, I said, especially a friend of the family, my family. I said, "Why don't you go look at that girl?" And said, "That's a very beautiful girl." So I looked at her. I said, yeah, "It's okay. She's right." <laughs> <laughs> and then I tell him, she came out just in time. I said, now is the time I have to, I have to tell her. <laughs> we went to see a, a bunch of girls. We went to the Certosa. They, they were playing uh, football. They played soccer ball. And soccer ball. <laughs> and then uh, he, he told me, he saw me over there. Yeah. It was, but I don't know him. He didn't, he didn't. Then it was after that I went to the store by the... Yeah, but she came by surprise. Things, yeah. Or maybe... Just to come and get me. Well, I don't know. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a whirlwind. Uh, a whirlwind romance. Uh, because after three or four months, we did get mad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about your schooling when you were a child and your early memories in Padula? Yes. Uh, really, I don't have too much school, just to the fifth grade. In that time, uh, the war started. Then the World War Second. Second, and then everything was upside down. And, uh, and the teacher did we live close by to the school. We used to live the girl there, and she went to cook. It was uh, it wasn't proper at uh, that time. And at that time, was and then, uh, that teacher was a bad teacher. With the war, uh, we don't have enough money they, to they go. Had one teacher. Oh, that for that zoo. For the no, for that where we live, yeah. but they have a lot of teach. Well, it's we uh, near uh, the house where I was born. We stay was one, two, three, four, five, fifty. Mm -hmm. But then, 
to go to the other town, you know, because the war, money was scarce. Scarce, yeah. We, we have everything, you know, food and clothes, but there wasn't too much money to do because we were a big family. Was six the money years. that the father mm -hmm. brought from America, and then they needed uh, about six, seven people, mm -hmm. was going and going down. And then at the end, they didn't get nothing at all. With the, <laughs> the common with the English, the money went down. The valuation, you know. Uh, uh, if uh, if uh, 2,000 lead used to buy a, a big pig. Lost a lot of money. After uh, a week or two that uh, the English people came to Badu, you needed 200,000 lead to buy a pig. You know, pig the, that you used to, to kill around the December to make all the, the stuff that you use during the year, like lard, and they said that. Well, we, we grew up very fine. I mean, uh, was a family. I think, uh, was Aunt V the only one who made it to, to yeah, college? Yeah, uh, my sister was, uh, because you already star. Right. And uh, yeah, it was a shame to, to uh, not let her finish, you know. Yeah, she, she became so a teacher. Nobody else could, you know. So most of the people in Padula, very few were able to leave Padula to go to school. Yeah, yeah, but if yeah. you to go outside... Uh, but a lot of many, people, the father, they have a father in America to send the money, and a lot of people... Well, there's a few people to a few people. But the, people. our case was a little different. Now, but a lot of people from Padula went to America. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. the America, but few people went around the 15, 16. If they had somebody there that uh, will wait for them, will take care of them. But uh, mostly around the 20, 25, 30, if they had the chance, whenever it was open, some opening like for America, USA, or for Venezuela, Colombia, Cuba, everybody will run. Mm. Because uh, just if you know, the artisans, they were uh, the shoemaker, the barber, the, the albanil, where go, the way. Uh, Favignama, we call uh, uh, the carpenter. Uh, carpenter uh, everything used to be manual, huh? and the rest they had to work uh, the land. But the land was not too much. Uh, everybody, if you had somebody in America, uh, whatever the way I said, whatever opening that you can go, you know, like I, I went to Venezuela. Because I, everybody could go there, but then they close also up to certain number. They start like in the U USA. Like uh, my father came uh, to America because he had brothers. He was around 22, 23 when he came to America. He like every family. Because my town used to be before 19, 1910 used to be around 20, 22,000 people. Then now there are the most 5,000, 5,000. Uh, everybody used to go to make workers and send the money f to support the family. If there's something about your upbringing that really made an impact in your personality and your character and the way you yeah. grew up, what... For me, the upbringing started well from 11 years old, when I was 11. I used to see the trouble that, no, not trouble, but the, the titans in the family. I, I went uh, from 11 to 12, I was a man to take, to get, to carry my family. So uh, it was, for you it was be having to become the man of the house? Yeah, I, I was the firstborn. Mm. Uh, uh, whatever thing I would bring home was good for the, the family. And that's we did stay. Then when I reached 50, 16, I used to make more money. But the thing weren't so bad anymore because they were a steady, steady flow of money that you can pay for the electricity, for this and for that. 
because we used to have a, a little about a little uh, property that would give us grain, some beans, uh, something that you can eat. And then from, uh, let's say, from 16, 17 years old, my, fam my family didn't, didn't need anything more. I was the breadwinner. And my father couldn't say nothing. It was depression. Couldn't, nothing, nothing. Until uh, the 40, 46, 1946. Did, was your father proud of you for that? Oh, I guess so. Did he ever tell you? No, my father, no. My, my mother was proud of me. <laughs> because he was, he, 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 he couldn't. You know, but so my proud <laughs> was, was very proud. Did, he never said anything? Or? No, I mean, uh, the no, mother was there. Right. He was in America. Mm -hmm. Probably he tell he you. Tell that, that I, I couldn't tell I couldn't tell him what he did, why he paid, because he didn't send money. Because I knew that... He can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah. How about you, Mrs. Ainelli? If there was one experience about growing up that really shaped the way you are today, or the way you, you were when you became an adult, was there one experience that really shaped you, influenced you? Yeah. Well, uh, my my father was a uh, very religious, and uh, he keep us uh, very close together in the family. And, uh, and I never forget uh, when it was uh, Christmas time in uh, uh, November. In the church, we used to have a novena, and every morning for one month, uh, a month November, before Christmas, and month of December, we used to. They, we used to get up at 5 o'clock. My father wake us up to go to Novena early in the morning. And yeah, every because, Sunday... Because the church, church was by. <laughs> Just after the, a street <laughs> divided from the house and the church. You know, we grew up in the church. Like we went in the choir, uh, you know, singing in the choir with the, all the group. I, I, saw those I was a very good man. The mother well, was very good. I was so a, they were well... Mostly all, mostly all the people, but all, the mother was take care because the mother was the boss of the house. I always say she has to do everything. The poor guy was going to work or work in the the land or work in something else. I was bringing the money. Now you so religion, yeah. religion. But were you also? yourself and your family very spiritual people? Well, in a way, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, it, how is that? Well, uh, I believe in God and uh, I have a lot of faith. Well, know, because so. them too was yeah. keeping uh, close. I remember my mother. So it wasn't just church then, it was also something that yeah, was in the, the family, home. Yeah. not the church. The church, well, the was, church because uh, was I, close I, by. I believe the church too because we spend a lot of time too over there. Mm -hmm. and my mother sent us, never tell us to not go. No. What, what was the name of the church you went to? St. Francis. Yeah. Was it a, it a was nice a, church? A, a convent. Beautiful. The convent of St. Francis of Assisi. Nice church. We have some pictures there. So. Okay, so you met, a few months later you married. Yeah. And then when did, well, when did you marry? What day? Nine, February, February 19, 19. 55. Yeah, 19, it, Where did you marry and describe the day for us? Describe, well, the, describe day. the day. How the was it? The day? <laughs> well, was a little you bit. Can remember. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure. She was in a, <laughs> we were in a dream. It was a little rainy day. Yeah, little cloud. But uh, we have a wedding in uh, my own house. Uh, the old way we did. We have uh, like a ten, ten room, like a three floor like a house. Yeah, um, my, I remember my mother, uh, you put the, all the furniture in one room and uh, get the chair from Jeff, the church. From, from the <laughs> the, and <laughs> you put a, you know, to We have maybe a a hundred people or more? Uh, no, more. Right? more it was than almost the 150. And when I put all the chairs in every room to make people sit down. Sit down. Uh, and then everybody, after the people came, we, we went to the church and get married. And then when we came back from the church, 
we have some uh, kind of little sandwich. No sandwich uh, was uh, after uh, sweets. No, uh, first we have the sweet and the uh, The sandwich was be when uh, we went to the uh, the uh, was it the first uh, to write the name with the civics and the the one that you twenty yeah. days before getting married. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, you go to the uh, to the, the main uh, the town to sign. That was uh, the civil ceremony, and then when we had the the, the church ceremony, then those are the one hundred fifty oh, people. I thought it was uh, uh, over there. We used to give a pastry, like a confetti pastry. This person two or three times around all the people. You, you buy a large quantity of pasta uh, and some uh, uh, liquor, mm -hmm. sweet, 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 sweet liquor, no, uh, not a kilo. Uh, oh, this one, the, she, she meant uh, when they went to the civil ceremony, then you had a sandwich you would buy uh, yeah, about yeah. Uh, two, three, was that two that hundred that. panini, you know, a bolillo, uh, with uh, uh, salami, Italian, uh, paisano, Italian salami, you know? I have a sandwich and everything. I have a table, you know? And the, the church the, was a beautiful ceremony. And uh, I have uh, my uh, sister, it's a Franciscan uh, a priest. He married all of uh, my sister, my oh, brother. Oh, that's bad, that's bad. Uh, the husband of the oldest sister is was the brother of the the Franciscan priest. priest. That's why I put that uh, in account was almost in the family. He came in to Paris, yeah. for, uh, it did was the mass in Italy. We have Italian? a dinner and dance. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, not dinner. We have a dance with uh, Morik and uh, an assembled thing. Not really. Yeah, it's like uh, by uh, with the, uh, the old way. Cardium, yeah. Everybody have a good time, and uh, we have a lot of people. It was nice. Was the mass in Italian? Hmm? Was the mass was it in yeah. Italian? No, no. At that time, I no, it was it just a marriage and a, a little uh, speech, like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at that time, they didn't. They no use of uh, this. The, the Pope that uh, wasn't there, that met the Italia, English, uh, whatever the national nationality. After came that the. They can do in English. They can do. Now, no, what was the weather like in Padula? Did it? It never snowed there, did it? Oh, oh yes. There's no to winter. Yeah, time. We have the four season. Oh. We have winter four season. And but lately, it wasn't only this year. Did they have some snow? When I was a kid, they used to have plenty, plenty of snow. My hands were full of uh, what do you call that? Hot rice. Yeah. Full of the, the cold. So, so you marry in '55. When did you decide and why to come to the United States? Well, we knew already. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I went there to get married. So we used to do everything in left. Uh, we married in June. We, we married in uh, February. We come back in June. Was that your first time in the United yes, States? Yes, first time. It, it described the, the passage. Yeah, we had the how, was, well, how was the passage? For me, it was uh, really, you know, leaving the family. It was a little hard. The first time. You know, the first time. Uh, but it wasn't too hard. For you? For her too. Well, no, let's, no, let's, she hear, was let's, for let's hear from her. <laughs> well, the first time, it was too hard, but then, when I reach there, I, I find a very warm family. Uh, that's right. Well, tell one in between. Wasn't feeling good uh, one night. I said, well, go see the doctor. I said. And then yes, she came out that she was pregnant. Without the that was uh, in the sheep. Yeah, on the sheep. <laughs> when, uh, when we were born. <laughs> the Andrea Doria. <laughs> the, the mother liked me very much, so that was really uh, something. Was uh, uh, just like it. Because uh, like. you come from far away, you don't know. I don't know nobody. I don't know the mother, I don't know the father. You know, 
just by name or you know like that but uh, did you know any english no we My still english. don't know <laughs> 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 what are you talking about we just uh, <laughs> you know people uh, ask me uh, you know uh, talk me in english a lot of visas they come and see me but i can answer no on one words so you came in that uh, in a ship called the Andrea Doria. Doria. See. How was that ship? Describe it. Was, it was beautiful. It was it big. Was, it was most uh, luxury. Now that ship has a history, doesn't it? I guess. So. Well, Explain what happened to that ship. Uh, well, uh, about was 14 months later, the ship collided with the Stockholm, Stockholm. Uh, almost close to New York, a sun. A uh, few people did, did die in that uh, tragedy. So this is, um, is this the only time that you came across the ocean on a ship? Yes. Or did you take other ships after that going back? No, no by plane, uh, then no. plane. We, we stay one night, we went uh, overnight to uh, New York, <laughs> that's it. After to play. Uh, How long was uh, the trip? Was it? About uh, seven, eight days. Yeah. Yes, seven, eight days. How much did it cost? Well, I don't know. But don't remember. $600? Huh? No, that was the second class. It was about around $1,000 each. Both of them. $1,000 each? Uh, I guess so. Time. That's a lot of money. Uh, that was... Uh, what was? 1955. 1955? Yeah. It's cheaper yeah. today. <laughs> well, what's uh, what the second class? You know, because uh, I didn't even bring uh, the third, third class. Now, when you came, did you have permission from the U.S. government to come? Yeah. 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 How, yeah. And that's why we waited three months to do all the paper. Yeah. We went to Naples to the council. And, uh, yeah, because I was uh, an American citizen, so I could bring a... You had been naturalized already? Sure. Yeah. Or were you naturalized or a resident? I was uh, an, uh, an American. Citizen. Say that for yeah, four because years. Because the father was citizen. No, no. I, well, I my so. two brothers, oh. they came when they came, they were already citizen. Because they were born when my father had already was already an American. When I was born, I was an, an uh, alien. When did you become a United States citizen? Uh, I was in 1948, 1944. Around uh, 1953. Now, when you came, did you come straight to New York? Yes. Yeah. And did you get processed with immigration there in New York no, or not? No, she was because you just came straight. When I passed, when I uh, say I left Padula, 1947. But uh, to come to New York, I was a transient because I was going to Venezuela. And uh, when I reached New York, I said, my father, my father, sits downstairs to the guy that was, no, you go the other way around, let's tell me. <laughs> uh, this uh, three days in El Silo. When was this? 1947. They didn't I was, let him in. I was a transient. And uh, they figured that I made all this thing up to come and stay in, in America, but... So your father went one way and you went... No, my father was... Uh, the way. The, the way, yeah. Was waiting. Way, yeah, my brother did too. And I said to the guy, the guy was... My father, I used to know this word, my father. My father, uh, yeah, yes, you have to go this way, you have to go. And then I told him, uh, and he said, three days, and I was silent. And the judge had to give me a to go for the judge. You pass it through here for what purpose? I said, I come through here because I didn't see my father for 15 years. Yeah, I didn't see. And then I got to Venezuela, I have a family. Uh, and then, okay, how long it was that? One month. Or so. I like to live under the sun. In Italian, I said, "Okay." My father put five hundred dollars 
like uh, bond, like bond something. Uh, and they gave me, I said the one month because I thought I would go to Venezuela, I would get rich right away. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have stayed two months, three months. Uh, and then I went to Venezuela. But then they, we started to do the regular paper. And uh, for a year and a half, or less than a, a year and a half, I, I, I came to, to New York. I came to New York. The October 28, 1948. But someone in Venezuela helped you out, though. Oh, yeah, the, the vice consul. The vice consul helped me a lot. I don't know, he took a, some kind of thing to. He helped me to. I came in 13 months. Maybe otherwise, I, I could waste five, six years. Mm -hmm. See, he helped me a lot. It treat me like a son. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now talk to us about about what you did when you came to New York uh, with a job or you. Well, I had my barber shop already there. I, I started right away working. And where did you have your barber shop? Was this in in Brooklyn? In, in Brooklyn? I had the two barber shops. G give the address of where you had your barber shop. Uh, I guess it was around third level or fifth. I was around the 420 from the 25 at Randy Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, say that again? I was in Atlantic Avenue. Atlantic, Atlantic Avenue? Yeah, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. And then I had another shop on Dean Street, close to Fabuchel. On Dean Street? Dean, Dean. D-E-A-N? Yeah, Dean Street. Uh -huh. And the Fabuchel North. It was in the corner. That's when he came in Flemishem. So you were a barber mm -hmm. in Brooklyn for how long? Four, no more. I was uh, the four years I became a citizen, and then uh, the, for about six years. And then we start the business uh, of selling uh, Italian products, records, magazine, and this. And then uh, slowly, slowly, we became jewelers, and then uh, jewelers uh, all the way. Uh, the first store was on Fourth Street. Fifth no, Fourth Street, Fourth Street, uh, okay. and Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn. Always in Brooklyn. Is that? Then at the end, we went. We make the big, big jump. We went to New York on Forty Seventh oh. Street. You are another, another store. The second store you have in Tottenham. And in Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, the Brooklyn big jump. The, the, the big jump was when uh, the first we was on Fort, and then the other one was on Thirteenth uh, Avenue. Together with four. the brother. Hey, where well, the on. brother? The, me and come on. And you made the jump to to the city when? Seventy-four. Hmm. Seventy-four. Seventy-five. Seventy-four. Seventy-five. Uh, something like this. No. To where exactly? Um, 47th Street, where they call La Calle de los Diamantes, the Diamond Street. And you and still so have? Uh, yeah, my brother is in charge of uh, that. belongs to him now. The brother's son? No. That's the one here. No. Anthony has his own. Yeah, that's why he has been talking about the big jump on 47th Street. So it's your son now who has that? Yeah, he was yeah. with in charge of that. Together with the brother and then uh, mm -hmm. my son. And then uh, to come to Macau, my brother Kamain came first. He liked the palms. But how, how was it that he first came here? Business. No, yeah, well, the, well, he came what with Tony? Yeah, what time? What uh, year? What? It was February. And what? What year? Oh, 77 probably. 77? 77? 78. 77 or 78? And why was that? I would... uh, they were doing jewelry. They had a, a, a friend of ours, Tony Farina, also uh, from Padula. He moved around all over the place. He was in Puerto Rico. He had a kid in Puerto Rico. He had a kid in Mexico. He had a kid in uh, Cuba, too. Two, two kids in Cuba. Two kids in Cuba, and uh, he uh, he knew some people over here, 
And my uncle went along with them. They said, hey, we can do some business here. They, they so speak fluent the Spanish. Jewish. So it was, a, it was a natural move for them. All right, so what happened then? I mean, he, he came, and he liked it. He liked the town, and they bought the house. So when he came to Brooklyn, he said to the wife, I bought a house. When we go close to the paper, you'll see the house. <laughs> but what was the appeal of, of McAllen? Well, he you know, felt like that was quite no, no. You're talking about at that time in, in Manhattan, there's a rat race. Not like it is at this moment in New York. Under Giuliani's term. <laughs> yeah, but, okay, now, so you're talking about it was a rat race in New York, but yeah. when you're from New York, don't you have, like, a certain... Yeah, but as you get older, you get tired of that. You, that, uh... After so many years... So many years of doing that. And then, also, he thought the business was going to be there. The peso uh, was uh, right, you know, this is before the peso <laughs> devaluation. Spanish, they knew, they were doing business, there was business to be made. Hey, beautiful place to live, oranges. No, you know, when you visit no a place, peace. it's a completely different thing than when you just it live there. Sense. So when you visit a place, you go, you know, he was there for maybe less than a week. Yeah. And everything was good. He just did it on the spur of the moment. And he didn't move until a year later. He moved a year after he bought the house. He had his friend Tony Farina. He said, I'm going to move down there too. He's the one who moved first. Tony Farina is the one who put it in the, in the, in the head to, to move down there. He was going to move down anyway. But maybe my, my uncle bought the house. He said, hey, oh, you, you stay yeah, in the house. He stayed, he stayed a year in, the, in his house. He stayed a year in, in, in Carmine's house. But, and, my uncle Carmine's and house. And did Tony stay? Yeah, Tony's here. Tony's here. Tony's still here. Okay. In fact, you can hear his son on the radio at uh, K on K Tex there. Uh, he's oh, yeah? distracted. All right. So you were barber at first in New York, and you were raising the children. Yeah, yes. that's why. Yes. Tell us about rearing children in New York City in the fifties and sixties. How was that? Who were the children first of all? And tell us about them and the experience. Well. <laughs> It was a little bit, uh, that time was the, the 16, it was a little bit. What? Uh, me? But, uh, not, not you, I mean... Uh, I the, 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 well, uh, our neighborhood was, was good, nice and quiet. We had the school, elementary school, one block away. It wasn't too hard for me because the school was uh, near, a block yeah, away. Two blocks away. And, well, uh, one big block and one block. Two block away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all went to the pub, public school. Who was the first child born? Antonio. Anthony. Anthony. And he was born in 57. 56. 56. And then the second one? Mila, uh, 57. The third one was John. John. And 1960, right? No. 60. And then the fourth? Mario in the 65, 65. 65. Yeah. And right now you live in New York, Mario and Anthony. Yeah, so you lived in a nice neighborhood. Nice, quite beautiful, beautiful block. Right? It was like, um, like a, uh, as a working class block. Uh, quite. We know each other, most of the people there. And, uh, we visit. Stoops. Nice. Was uh, was it a mixed neighborhood? Were there Irish yes. people, yeah, Italian there people, Irish, Polish people, Jewish? Any black people? No. That time no. No, no that time. It's still now. They're Chinese, yes. Chinese. We call Chinese. Maybe the Taiwanese, uh, Korean, uh, Korean. Korean. Number of. So now, explain to me what your feelings and emotions were about leaving the old country and coming to a new country. And well, how do you feel about that now? How did you feel then and how do you feel now? At that time, I guess, one thing about the family, the sister, but uh, 
when, when she came over, she found the family the same. And uh, all friends around. But still, uh, still you miss your... Uh, well, you still you miss... Uh, he still was... Uh, I think more about it. Slowly with the time. But I wasn't too bad because I was uh -huh. surrendered from... Uh, yes, the family. thing was, like, you see the, the, the My sister of the picnic, <laughs> That community, blocks away, community was there. The people from the hometown were there, so when the language was there. When somebody got married, they invite us, and they were like, like they go all over. The first time that I reached there, I, uh, I see a lot of Italian people. So, you know, miss the... Yeah, paisan. Like, so uh, even though you left Italy, you didn't really leave Italy altogether? No, because no, we no, find a, not Italy there. <laughs> a lot of Italian people that time were there. Yeah, they still were. Around the... Uh, around the yeah. What about this, this Padula reunion that happens every year? Oh, they say it's a circle that uh, is almost... Uh, now it's around the around 20 years old. At yeah, the beginning, this was more as to when they start was more a, a twelve each other, like uh, at that time there were no insurance or nothing, and there was uh, this this club made in this way, and then we keep and they keep still keeping just that spirit, at least one year or twice a year to get together. I remember the old days. Talk about the old days, the family who was living, who was dying. Is it going strong still? No, it's still going strong. How many people gather? Oh, when well, we, we do a feast, especially the affair, we had about close to 350 people. And I remember that uh, 40 years before, before the war, it used to be 500, 600 people going to do picnic all over, up the river, up the island, but thousands. Uh, at one time, I, to remember, when I had a barber shop in, in Brooklyn, a lady came to repair a, a medal. I got a look in the back, record the remembrance of the Padulisi. I said to her, how did you find this, this medal? Ask the lady. Oh, my father was belonged to Societa Padolais. And we, when we were a young girl, we used to sell tickets to all the paisans. And who had the, the first or second the selling ticket? The most used to have that medal for uh, that's a, it's, it's a long, <laughs> long time long ago. Mystery. I want to ask one question. Um, with um, when Grandpa's brothers came here, yeah, who, who, who were the first ones to come? I, I maybe I guess all the friend. And what year? Uh, the, the year I don't know. He never. He came and he never came back. This is Uncle Frank, this is Fanny Esposito's brother. Yeah, well, Four. 1910, Michael was born. Oh, I, I, I guess I know when they, when they came here. They came here around uh, 1903, because B was born in 1902. Oh, okay. And then the, the mother... And from there, the, the rest of them came. And then, uh, I guess, they said, then uh, Uncle come on. Do they also have a, a distinction that his, C.J. Keen, right? Yeah, C.J. Keen. And, a, and your... My, my mother, there were two sisters and two brothers. The marriage. His father married... Um, Petronilla. Petronilla. Yeah. And then... Uncle Carmine married his brother, his, 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 his father's <laughs> brother Francesca. married the other sister. But they, they were first, we were second. Right. This Padula Circle activity? Yeah. What was your involvement in that? Oh, I was a, a tesorier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Did you get involved with it from the day you got to America? Yeah, when, uh, after two, three years. I don't know when. Because it was almost dead, the, the society. And then when we were about 20 people, we started to... Kamayim Tepedino started. No, wait, uh, Kamayim came after. Who was Petrosin? Well, me, Petrosin, uh, uh, Kosala. Kalo. Andrei. Ventier, George Ventier, no, how was it called? I can't Roberto Schiele. When your children were growing up, did your children go to those picnics? Yes. Yeah, when they were growing up, yeah, we used to go. So your children have memories of that? Mm -hmm. I hope yeah. so. You remember that, right? Well, those days, the, so in the boat, uh, Belmont Park. No, no Belmont Park. Uh, no, no, boat. Street, no, boat. No, no, Belmont Street, but no, in we went once, but I don't think so. They were in, uh, still. Belmont, Belmont, Belmont was a lake. The boats, yes. No, Belmont. Yeah. yeah. Well, we went up to, uh, to almost to, close to what the. the where the kings, where the the army teaches. Oh, Hudson River. Huh? Uh, West Point. West Point. We passed. That, West that Point. was on another trip. Another trip. Then we went by boat. That was when we went on the circle line. Mm. But they did a number of things. The Padula Circle. Yeah. It went. But like you said, they they revived it because it used to be really big. That's why I wanted to get that picture. To show you, it was a big part. If I can get that, I'll give it a bit. Maybe we, we give it to the circle. Song. Maybe, he, maybe it's part of the memorabilia of the circle. Yeah. Because of my uncle also, Uncle Frank, yeah. he was part of the circle. He used to be yeah. some kind of. Yeah. And now they're trying to revive the circle up and, and get it with more members and. You know, now, the kids with the, the internet, on. they try to get people from all over the USA. Whoever's a part of Lays, huh? Even and and I, I guess uh, in October, I go over there, they have a big, big affair. They're going to have the, the big, uh, the commemorating 120 years. And then plus people from, from the tower, from Padula. They, they come to the, the army. mayor from Padula is coming for the yeah, to, people. To dedicate a what park to... What man is this? The mayor. Oh, the mayor. The, the, mayor. Mayor, the mayor from Padula. Mm. Yeah. We have to dedicate a, a park to Joseph Te, uh, Petrosino, the great uh, policeman. He was born in Padula. This is Joseph Petrosino. And they dedicate a park in Brooklyn. One park was dedicated 10 years ago in, uh, in New York, Manhattan, right. to Joseph Pazuzzi. Uh, also, they did it, last year they did is, it. Uh, is uh, Nino going to come? Yeah. Nino will always My come. Cousin. Our cousin Nino is a blast and uh, he's, yeah, he the keeps thing. the Petrozino name alive. <laughs> <laughs> As part of you know the Padula the Pope, War, uh, and uh, well, but the thing was, he was uh, the first Italian American detective. Uh, he in, he, in he was at uh, that time. He was he was a friend of Theodore Roosevelt. Who was then? Uh, was, uh, he was. Uh, uh, he, he, he was asking him a question. Of, he was a captain of the police department yeah, back then. Yeah, well, the Italian. They, they, they built the, the Italian police div division yeah, on account of him. What, to fight the black hand? <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the black hand? The black, they called the black hand. It uh, was now the what? mafia, I guess. Now, uh, the name now is the mafia. Well, the black hand used to terrorize all the Italian around the Mulberry Street where the little Italy. No, it wasn't spread enough, no. He was committed to to eradicate. Uh, and at his time, they say he was the master of disguise. He'd go in and infiltrate these things, and but everyone was in cahoots at that time, and, and they sent him on a secret mission. 
uh, to find more information about the, the Black Hand the in Sicily. And, um, in and there was only like two people who knew about it. And one was like a captain, and, and they believe he was paid off at the time, and he, he got murdered in, in Sicily. As a young man? He was in the 35, I guess. Young man? Wow. We got pictures of uh, them. Really? Yeah, they, no, they made a, they made a fi uh, two, the three movie. film. The Ernest Borgnine oh. movie. Uh, 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 you saw the Borgnine? Uh, Johnny told me about it. Uh, I could get the picture if you want. Uh, they, I think they, I want to see that we'll, picture. We'll find, we'll, find it, we'll find it later. We, we can oh. scan it. But um, tell me about your your grandkids and what you think of of their life in this country now. They will uh, do much better than when they were like what I did. And, uh, my son did. Did yeah, you not? Did you not do well? Is that what you feel, or, or what? No, I did much well the way I was in Italy. I can I can complain. I'm a, I am a great American. I began to be a I love America before I came. And I called the, the, the council in, in Caracas. He treated me like a, 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 like a son. He, he gave me all the trick, what I'm supposed to do, what I don't supposed to do, everything he did to me. The council in Venezuela to yeah. get to, get yeah. to America? Yeah, he said uh, one time, uh, when he said everything goes on the street, you go to the Italian, Francois, he asked for a visa transient, that you pass through New York, let me say, and go to Italy. But uh, you don't tell that I'm going to live in New York, he said. Because then they had to wait 10 years to reach, to, reach, to go to me, because uh, if, they, if he didn't give me that visa, and nobody was uh, asking for that visa, that visa will go back uh, to Rome. Eh? And they told them everything, what to do, what not to do. If you go get the, the transient visa, you come to me, I stand. So uh, if it wasn't for that man, we wouldn't be standing here today. No, maybe later <laughs> on, uh, it would change. Because so maybe she would have got married, who knows? Maybe uh, someone uh, other suitor would have uh, came uh, and took her away from uh, you. And one time, the first time, maybe, I was doing almost uh, in three months. The first time, the kind of let me do all the, the paper, paperwork. Because he had the visa, it was to an Italian guy, and he thought it was almost the end. He thought that this guy doesn't, doesn't want to go to America anymore. He said at the last moment, at the last moment, he, went, he took. So when I, I went to him, I said, I'm sorry, mi dispiace, he said, I'm sorry. But remember, the first one I get to hear, you be, you, he, he did that. It was a you man's are, word. Man's word. And when he said that about the, the paper, he had to, but I, I left all my paper over here. He left all the guys, like, at that time it wasn't big at the council, it was in a small house. Mm -hmm. He left the guy who worked for a day to check how about the, yeah. the, the paper. And he was a no. Uh, no, 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 mm -hmm. uh, And then uh, when he said, go, go home and look in, <laughs> in, in your room, I, I said to him, I let him, I let him, uh, as my, I have only one police, he said, top of the chair, <laughs> over there, I have everything. <laughs> he left. <laughs> And that was true. Sure. I am um, a small police on top of a chair. <laughs> no big, no big house. <laughs> well, yeah, we were sleeping too. Small room. Me and my uncle, and we had three people. I had a large room, but bed, but the bed. Uh, we were three people. And then, uh, uh, then finally one day, guy called me. I said about uh, that's about. He said, "Call uh, I, uh, that's a uh, sure now. This is don't know that you get it. Uh, call again uh, in your town. It is uh, in about a week. I got the paper. My uh, no, the act uh, when I was born. This, uh, How did they do it back then, though? They they you had to be sponsored. 
You had to be well, like well, Sally. Look, but I had already the paper that my father, uh, I had the family away. Right. Yeah. So I come, uh, he took, think that uh, I was I supposed to be first. And they. No problem. They, no problem. I, I, I wish I had the name, I would call him. <laughs> you no. forgot his name? No, forgot the name of the, the next day. It's <laughs> not there anymore. He's too happy. Yeah. You're too happy to get yeah. on yeah. But uh, I, I think I would say that uh, it was wonderful. Mrs. Ionelli, if, if you could give a, a piece of advice, share some of your wisdom with your grandchildren about just how to get along and how to survive in this world based on your own experience, <clears throat> what would you say to them? To keep it close to the family. To the family. And, uh, you know, to, what, to watch out each to other. To love each other, to watch... Uh, to study. Over everything, you know. To kill one another one. Now, Mr. Ayanelli says that to study. Is that one of the top things? I mean, is that more important than, say, to keep an eye on each other? Well, the story is it's good too, because uh, we know how that, and uh, we like uh, our grandchildren uh, to be go someplace, I mean, uh, <laughs> do something. But you've had a good life. Yes, that's oh, true. Sure. Be but because you didn't go beyond the fifth grade, yeah. that didn't keep you from having a good life. I mean, you no, still... Just... Um, uh, well, she resent a little bit that they didn't go to school. Yeah, I was resent a little bit because I can uh, do what I want. And, and I, that's I don't like to go to school. That they, they, you see, that's the way they, they used to teach them, but they were supposed to do third, the fourth, and fifth. At the end, they didn't no, 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 nothing. What about you, Mr. Ianelli? Words of wisdom. To, uh, to your grandchildren, to your children who are still very young. Well, I told them to be, to be honest and to go ahead. I like them to go ahead be more than. What, uh, what do you mean? Ahead. What do you mean by go ahead? Ahead in everything, in sport, <laughs> in jobs, <laughs> make money, more money for the family. <laughs> That's uh, well, what the father said. Uh, well, basically. I think we've had well, our, our life, because we've, we've worked together. All of our, my life, I can remember just go, going to the jewelry store, working at the jewelry store, uh, work, working the business in Manhattan. Uh, and we did it basically as a family. You know, uh, the rise of the, the jewelry business yeah. and to, to going to Manhattan, to coming over here, to opening up a restaurant. It was all fair. It was a family affair, family. basically. Uh, with and the, with the brother Carmine and the nephew. And the, yeah, it was all. Uh, Everybody was family. building up. Uh, and uh, what I tell, like uh, the union, makes makes your strength. If you are two, or three people working together, you can go ahead. If you are all alone, sometimes you can do some. Some most of the time you can do nothing. Because he got married, he started to grow a family. He had to do whatever thing to, to support the family. But when you are together, it's much better. Has that been your life experience? Yes, yeah, sure. Hey, give some examples. Give me an well, example of... This is, um, uh, with each, I reached 1948. My brother reached over there in 1947 in New York. In 1949, we bought a house, put on the name of my father and mother. With that house, we paid around, the, at that time, around $14,000. After so many years, we need the money to spend. We borrowed money on the house. The house was always there to give us push up to go ahead. And then we get a mortgage one. Yeah, for the mortgage, yeah. That's a collateral. Collateral. And, and that's uh, always was like that. See, that's why uh, I want everybody to have a house. And 
And if we are together, you can go ahead. Because maybe he has a $10,000, another has a 10, another 10. You make a, you make a, a nuclear there that you can go ahead. So your philosophy is go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> How about your philosophy, Mrs. Ayanen? Well, <laughs> to I, go ahead too. I, I, he was the boss every time. Whenever uh, I wasn't too much of a business. But I told you all the time but, what uh, we were doing. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Together. But I, I was out of, from uh, everything. No, uh, the business I didn't want there to know nothing because this way she won't work. I don't like myself to do business with another man. This and then I to I go home and tell people. Pe, 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 pe. I don't like. I never tell her nothing. She's but she's a worry ward. <laughs> she's supposed to be the rain of the house, right, Regina? And you were. Thank yeah, you. You yeah. are. So you were the boss? She well, was the boss. Uh, in the house. Some way, in yeah, the yeah, house she yes. roped the kids. I, I, I spend more time with my grandchildren now than I was spending time with my, my kids. So they live early in the because morning? Because when I did show them sometime at 10 o'clock, they were already asleep, the kids, because they had to go to school. Mm -hmm. Only on Sunday, it's every day, day off, then we go out together. Yeah, Sunday dinner. But in the weekdays, very seldom I used to go stay with my kids. But she was there? She was there. All the time? All the time. And then my mother, my, my father was there too. She wasn't all alone. And then we live together uh, with uh, my sister-in-law, Fanny. We live uh, next door. Uh, next door. That was a big help. We had, we had a, a grandfather upstairs, grandmother upstairs, Uncle Vincent upstairs. He used to work for the FBI. He used to tell us that. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> <laughs> he used to get home so late. He used to go, what are you doing, man? He was I worked so, for the FBI. He, he used to tell us way, all that. I worked for, for years and years. We thought he worked for the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, they say almost uh, There's so many stories. We have a lot of, uh, lot of This nice is the life of the... We it's a, a good of, life. A lot of nice remember in Brooklyn, with all the friends and the family. And, uh, and do, you, do you feel more American now than you do Italian or... or, or oh, I, or is that I, I love Italy, but I'm American. Oh, uh, 100 percent. We like you, know. You what? We like America. Yeah. We go back to Italy, but uh, My, we can stay a, a more than two, three months. We got to come back. Yeah. All right. We love Macau too. <laughs> <laughs> She's running for office. <laughs> uh, we try to keep the love of uh, Padula, the hometown. Also, uh, once the uh, well, way she was a kid, but someday my my hope to bring everybody there for two three weeks to make noise. <laughs> to make <a> noise. <laughs> we got to plan that the next year. And I am nearly not. Next year, next year, next year you go to. Forget. Uh, we have, uh, I forget, uh, we have uh, eight beautiful grandchildren. Let me see if you can remember them. The name is Joseph, Karin, Jonathan, Corey, Corey Francesca, and uh, Gianna, and Michael, and Christian. Uh, two live in New York. I'm 16 Macau and I love each one.